What's good, people? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. It's your boy, Laja. I want to talk to you today about the next wave of short-term rental. This is not Airbnb. This is a different space. This is the hourly rental business. And this particularly focuses on people's events. So you can think about life moments like birthdays, anniversaries, proposals, weddings, engagements, and things in that arena. Essentially, people are spending a lot of their time trying to rent spaces that they can bring their family, friends together to have a great time. And they don't wanna have these parties at their homes. They don't wanna have this party in random places. They're looking for a private, you know, spacious environment to bring their people together to have a great time. So this business space, I've seen a lot of traffic kind of come out of peer space. So peer space is the front leader of the events rental business, sort of similar to Airbnb in the short term rental business for residential. So the way this works and the pros that I can say for this is the hourly rental leads to higher potential to charge clients. So you, what you will see in the Airbnb space is depending on where you are in the marketplace, you can charge anywhere from 100, 200, 300, 400 dollars a night, depending on what amenities you're providing people. And then you see something very similar in the events hourly rental business, where you can charge anything from 50, 100, 200, 300, and 400 dollars per hour, you know, on your space, which is slightly different from the Airbnb model because these people don't tend to spend the night in your place. The other pro that you can see from this is you can use this space for multiple different use cases during the on book hours. So our experience so far is the events rental business is a very heavily weekend based business. And that makes sense, right? People are you know, throwing their parties and that will tend to be on the weekends because that's when most people are free to attend these events. So on the weekdays, you're gonna see that there's a little bit less use. So the really interesting thing you can do is use it for multi-purposeful uses. And I'll touch a little bit more on that in a bit, and I can tell you a little bit of our experience um, using Monday to Thursday to, our, uh, to the best of our abilities. But before I jump into that, I wanna to talk to you about the cons of running this business and what it could look like for you. The first thing that we saw was really, really high upfront costs, you know, depending on your target market. Getting furnishing for the property was one thing, but also before even getting the property was another thing. Trying to secure a commercial property, you know, going to these different platforms to find uh, people, talking to a bunch of different property owners, and eventually landing on the space, fixing the space up, paying the security deposit on the place. You know, it's, it's a task, right? Um, the second thing is high management of clients. So when people have their events, you know, some clients are low maintenance, other clients are high maintenance. So there's a, there's a lot of gaps in the market, depending on what you, you know, run into, but some people could be high maintenance, meaning you have to make sure that you're on top of them. You gotta make sure you check them in. You gotta make sure you check them out. You gotta make sure they cleaned up properly. You gotta make sure they didn't damage anything in the place. So it's really, really high maintenance. And then you gotta make sure you're on call during these events. So. It's something that may occupy some of your time. It's things that we're looking to outsource right now. So um, sort of similar to Airbnb where you can get people to clean the property. So these are similar things you can do. You can get people to clean property. You can get people to check people in. You can get people to check people out. Um, it's just a matter of building the system and the frameworks that works for you based on how you're pricing to stay profitable. Like I said, the last piece of risk that I would say is liability of damages, which we touched on a little bit. Um, just making sure that you're picking the right people. So screening is one huge thing that we learned to do. Um, after a little bit, we had a party that went crazy. A landlord was calling us because there was a lot of things that were going on that weren't supposed to be going on in the building at the time. So be careful with who you allow to take your space and be careful who you trust with your keys. So that's one thing we learned. We learned to screen people. So before people's events, we would have them come in, we would get to meet them, we would get to get a feel for who they were, who's their friends, you know, what's the vibe gonna be like at their event to make sure they're not gonna be, you know, destroying anything in our place. And also just to get a face on face to face to make sure everything was okay. So what has our experience so far been like? So we're gonna say people love a lot of space, right? Like really large spaces that have high ceilings, large windows, nice furniture, plants, art, decor, games, and music. Those are really, really key ingredients that draws people in because they're looking to have a great time in a great space. The next thing is 
like we said, it's a weekend heavy business. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday tends to be the most prominent birthdays, engagements, proposals, bachelor parties, anniversaries, you know, weekdays are a bit slower. So what we've been trying to pivot towards and we've seen a little bit of traction in that direction is corporate onboarding training sessions, production teams, people that record podcasts, people that record videos, photographers, uh, trying to do work in that space. We have the space and equipment for them to do stuff like that as well. Managing event hosts and their guests. So be upfront about the rules in your building, you know, make sure that they know and you commun over communicate with them what you expect out of them because people will you know, walk over you if you allow them to. So be careful about that. Guests will try to show up before they're booking. You know, people book from 10 to 12 a.m. and they'll try to show up at 5 p.m. to set up. That's one thing we've seen a lot of the time. So just be really careful with how you navigate those conversations. Make sure that they're aware that, you know, the time that they booked for is what they should be expecting. You know, if you're giving them anything outside of that, it's a courtesy. So make sure you're communicating that to them so they know that you're going out of your way to make sure they have a great experience because you know, at the end of the day, they're gonna leave you a review and you're gonna leave them a review. So you wanna make sure that everyone has a great time, but you also wanna make sure that they don't walk all over you and your rules and you know other booking opportunities that you might have because other people might be willing to pay for those hours. So make sure that they know upfront what they're gonna get. And the last thing is cleaning up after themselves. So make sure you know your guests are cleaning up. That's one thing, you know, very bare minimum, at least clean up the space, take their stuff, um, take their trash out. And then the next piece is using platforms like Turno, like I said in the past, um, to clean properties. Like find a bunch of cleaners on Tur Turno, add them to your team and get them in the door after an event or before an event, depending on how you want to play it um, and how you want to manage the property. Just make sure you're getting the high quality cleaning that the space needs to make sure your next guest that's coming is going to have a great time there as well. So what's next for us in this event rental business space? Um, for us, it's building relationships with startups, corporate companies, production teams um, to fill up our weekdays because like I said, you know, weekends are a bit easier. We've seen the platforms like Peerspace, Gigster, Splacer, um, are able to bring us that traffic organically so we don't really need to work too hard for it um, to fill up our weekends but the weekdays are a bit emptier so we need to go out there and create these opportunities for ourselves to fill up the calendar to maximize the potential for profits that we could get so our target markets typically podcast hosts um, social media creators corporate groups and production teams so we're going to be pushing really hard to create relationships with these different types of people to make sure that we're having a space and environment, you know, that's really, really active. Uh, we want to build a community of these different types of people as well uh, so they can leverage each other, build relationships and scale all together. So now how can you get started? Look at peer space in your community, measure the demand and the places on the market. Look at what makes them tick. You know, what do they have? What type of space, what type of furniture, what type of lighting, you know, all these different things matter for the people that are going to be booking for their events. You know, find a gap to fill in the market. You know, you can either offer the same quality at a lower price or you can hire a higher quality and charge a higher price. So find where in the marketplace you think there is an opportunity for you to put a product in front of people that you can offer them. The next thing I would say is use LoopNet. LoopNet is a really great platform to find commercial spaces. You know, you're gonna be getting all the numbers for what leasing would look like, the security deposit, and then also figure out what it would cost to furnish the place. Depending on how big the space is, furnishing might cost different things. So, you know, based on that, just make sure you're getting a clear picture of what your upfront cost into the business is gonna look like um, to make sure things go the way you expect them to. The next thing you're gonna do is after you figured out, you know, what the leasing term is gonna look like, the security deposit furnishing, then you're gonna raise the capital that you need. That could be yourself, that could be your friends, your family, partners that have similar visions to you. Um, just bringing this plan together and saying, hey, look, this is the opportunity, you know, this is the amount of money that is going to get this thing done. This is the potential projections of, you know, profits and, you know, really selling that to the people that you really wanna build with. Um, and then growing with them, experimenting with them, and then seeing what comes of it. 
The next thing is pulling the trigger and executing so you can get all these things on paper, you can start talking to a bunch of people, um, getting a place and all these different things, but it's not gonna matter if you don't pull the trigger. So when you get a clear picture, clear idea, and you have a target and aim, um, you just need to fire, make sure that you're pushing the trigger on this, um, get a place that you like, um, get furnishing that you like, start marketing the property. So the next thing you're gonna do is get a photographer to help you sell the high quality because Photos are what's really gonna sell this thing, um, this experience for people. The first photo people see ultimately decides whether or not they're going to pursue your property. And then the next thing after that we've seen is coming to see the place in person. So they see it in photo, they're like, wow, this is amazing. But then they come see it in person and they were like, wow, it's even more amazing. And then it's really easy to close after that. They see the place, they're like, wow, this is great. This is what I expected. Or it's even beyond what I expected. I would love to be here. So the next thing you do is you list on Peerspace, Geekster, and Splicer after you've gotten high quality photos. Um, and then you get your first booking, you know, don't overly underprice yourself. That's something we experienced really early on. We underpriced ourselves because we were trying to underprice the market so we can get you know, some traction, get the first couple of reviews and start really pushing. Um, it worked out for us, it really did. Uh, but eventually we noticed, like I said, you know, when you're selling on these, on these different things, you're selling the future. So if you sell too far into the future and you make changes and you learn things along the way, it could end up you know, kicking you in the back if you underprice yourself too much because then you're gonna have to deal with people in the future um, you know, for a really low price when other people might be willing to pay more. So be careful with underpricing yourself, especially if you're selling a booking that's more than two weeks out. Because you know, more than two weeks out, you're gonna iterate the product and you're gonna make changes, you're gonna make updates, you're gonna get better. So you, know, you don't wanna make sure you're not selling too far for too low of a price. So, because also it's really hard to cancel on you know, bookings that happen. So you, don't wanna, you wanna maintain a great relationship with platforms like Peerspace and Gigster because they're gonna bring you free traffic. So you wanna make sure you're not canceling any bookings. So just be careful with making sure that you know, you're pricing yourself properly and you're not selling too far in the future uh, to where the price is too low for what you might want. So anyway, this is our experience and what it's looked like in the event rental space. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do me a favor, smash that like button and comment below in the comment section. Let me know what your thoughts are around events rental. You know, have you ever rented a place before to throw an event, a birthday, party, a wedding, anything of that matter? Um, have you ever done that? You know, or have you ever been on the other side? Have you ever been an event host where you know you were renting out your space to somebody that was trying to throw an event? Let me know in the comment section. I want to know what demand looks like in this space. I'm curious to learn more. So if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, smash the like button and make sure you comment below. Let me know where your thoughts are. I would, I would love to learn a little bit more from you as well. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you on the next video. It's your boy, Liza, and peace.